Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today I'm going to do a bit of a product review. We haven't done one of them in a while and I think this is a pretty cool product that could really actually um, help a lot of reefers out, particularly in some uh, sort of emergency situations where something goes wrong. It's the kind of thing that could potentially save your tank or at least give you peace of mind as to uh, if something were to go wrong, uh, you're in good hands. And so what I'm going to be reviewing today is the Inkbird Smart Wi-Fi Temperature Controller. I've got one of them right here. Set up, uh, well at least set up um, in a way that allows me to demonstrate its uh, features to you. For those of you that don't know, the Inkbird um, Temperature Controller is uh, a little device that you're seeing right here with a, a screen that shows you the current temperature of uh, the thermometers and the set temperature that we're aiming to achieve. So right now you can see this one is set to 26 degrees and the thermometers are currently reading 21.5. Now I say thermometers plural because there's two of them as you can see here. Uh, and that's the first uh, feature that this has that would be over and above the thermostat in your traditional um, in-tank heater um, or um, glass heater that might be connected to your tank as it is right now. By having two thermometers, you have redundancy. There's a fair few smart controls built into this, um, but the main one that takes advantage of the two thermometers is that it constantly reads them both, and if the temperature differential between them is greater than three degrees, it will sound an alarm. Because that basically means one of the, one of the thermometers has failed or the calibration of them has gotten way out of whack. Uh, and this is something that can happen with even the highest quality temperature probes. So by having two, you get that extra element of redundancy. Cheap glass heaters are notorious for this. The temperature probes either get corroded or they drift over time and they can be multiple degrees out of calibration and you would never even know if there's only one of them. But by having the two, you've always got that point of calibration. The next feature that this has is actually Wi-Fi control. Uh, and that's really good because it's essentially a smart things device. Um, for those of you that are familiar with um, smart things or the Toya network, it's basically uh, a smart home cloud ecosystem. This device is part of it in their own white labeled version of it um, for Inkbird. Uh, and basically it means it can send you push notifications to your phone if it ever enters an alarm state. Temperature too high, temperature too low, thermometers are reading too far um, apart from each other or um, the heat has been on for a really continuous period of time but the temperature is not raising, uh, any of those types of situations it can alert you to. Or you can just open up the app and check the temperature of your tank at any time from anywhere. So pretty cool, pretty useful feature. The earlier versions of the Inkbird controller, these have been on the market for quite some time, don't have that Wi-Fi feature. So um, but these days, I think it's a no-brainer to go for the one with the Wi-Fi. They make a few different versions of this. The one that I have has uh, dual power sockets here, um, but both power sockets are controlled at once, so they're not independently controlled. The idea of this version is to only control a heater, for example. However, they do have a version that's capable of controlling a chiller as well, where the power sockets would be independently controlled um, so one would turn on when the tank's too cold, i.e. the heater, and then the other would turn on when the tank's too hot, i.e. the chiller. So get the version that's right for you. I wanted to give you a, just a quick little demonstration as to how this works. It should be pretty obvious, but I've got the two temperature probes right here, and I'm going to squeeze them in my warm hand, and you'll see that the temperature will start to rise. That's this first temperature reading here. And uh, just give it a few seconds to heat up, but it will very quickly get to 26 degrees. And what I'm currently powering right now is that lamp that just turned off. So as you saw, it got to 26 degrees and the lamp turned off. So uh, nothing too revolutionary there, exactly what you would expect out of these two temperature sensors. Now I have this glass of cold water here, so I'm gonna put them in the cold water and you'll see that the temperature should start dropping quite rapidly. And in a second, that lamp's going to turn right back on. You can see it counting down. It's quite responsive. And I reckon in probably about three, two, one, there we go. 
the lamp is now turned back on. Now, what happens if I just heat up one of these temperature probes? So now I'm going to squeeze one of them. And what I'm attempting to do now is cause the device to enter an error state where one of these probes will be cold and the other one will be quite warm. So I've got one of them in my glass of water, one of them in my hand. And there we go. It's now the alarm going off that you can hear and it's in an error state. Now I've just silenced that alarm. Uh, that would be indicative of a situation where one of these failed or something went drastically wrong with the tank that these were reading completely different temperatures. And that's something that's really important to know as well because it's something that you'd want to check and you'd want to know about. Now I've just reset this by um, unplugging it and plugging it back in and having both temperature probes back in the water so that they're at the same temperature again to get rid of that annoying alarm. But it's annoying by design, obviously. You want to know when something like that is wrong. Um, the reason why I would recommend something like this at a minimum for any tank is because the, com the most common thing to fail on our reef tanks is in fact heaters. They are a disposable item. They're not something that should last forever. Um, even the best quality ones, the titanium ones, won't last forever. And the titanium ones themselves generally don't come with a temperature probe built in, which is a good thing because then it means that you can buy one of these or something similar to this to go along with it and run them with redundancies, aka the dual temperature probes to make sure that it's always reading accurately and also a continuous runtime alarm, which this also has and is configurable in the app to say, you know what, if my heaters have been on for more than three hours or four hours or two hours, you can configure it and the temperature hasn't changed, um, something is wrong, sound the alarm. Uh, these are just such simple devices, but so useful to helping prevent disaster with your tank because a temperature related disaster with a tank can nuke the entire system. If the temperature is too hot, you're gonna cook the tank and everything in it. And if your heaters are not working properly, the tank could be a lot colder than you otherwise might think. So having accurate thermometers is always key. I'm pretty sure most LFSs in Australia stock Inkbirds, so that should be pretty easy to find. If not, just ask your local LFS and I'm sure they can get them in stock. These are not particularly expensive and as I said, they have quite a few models that are available, including ones that can control chillers. But I would always recommend going for the Wi-Fi controlled one in this, this day and age, um, just to give you that peace of mind that when you're out and about, not at home, if something goes wrong with your heater, it's gonna sound the alarm and send a notification to your phone. Anyway, that's all for today. My name is Marcus, and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.